found this old um, this old poem. <coughs> it's called the Christmas Tale. It started off as a funny um, nonsense poem, but like everything else, it's the writing takes over. So here it goes. It's called the Christmas Tale. It's a seasonal tale to be told by a man who was nearly as old as the tale that was told by his father, and his before that as they sat <coughs> in a dark frosty night by the fireside they sat watching the soot make pictures of flames set alight on the back of the grate. In those days long ago when Christmas was cold and covered in snow and we all froze our ears off singing carols to houses where the only sensible ones were those little mouses. Sorry about that. <coughs> all snug by the fire in their straw beds. And it wasn't old Rudolph whose nose that was red with a terrible frostbite <coughs> for a rock hard mince pie and a pat on the head from a mean old guy in big house at the posh end of the street <coughs> where he froze to the spot. Blocks of ice for our feet. But how happy we were with an apple and some nuts and an old tangerine that was left overnight by some presence unseen. And for once in the year, there's a gift from your mother. And it'd be a long, hungry year before you get another. And my dad's wooden horse that he made from a crate that he got from a man delivering groceries to the stores on the RAF camp next door with its long wee mane and its ears made of felt and its real leather saddle and all painted brown and it smelt like it came from a proper store. And you were proud of that thing he made but you knew of course there was no way that it resembled a horse but <clears throat> that didn't matter, it was best that you had and when your friends come round you were proud of your dad. Now Christmas seems easy. It can come in July with interest-free credit in summer mince pies and when Christmas Day comes there's no real surprise for they've had it all. No point waiting because all this new stuff is simply updating the still new but old that goes quickly out of date because a new advert on the telly has got a faster thing or a new dingling or a better trajectory. Well, I, <clears throat> I liked it much better to await my surprise for me mum with those happy tears in her eyes for she'd saved up forever to buy me that gun that would make me happy and give me hours of fun. For she'd say, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> the magic of Christmas, no matter how trite, was best it could be. And you were pleased with a gun though you'd ask for a bike. And when you sat down to dinner with crackers and all, that little chicken looked really big when you were small. But that was the magic. It was rare, a rare treat. And that's really what made our Christmas complete. I've, I've, I've been down in... Um, Just put this water. I forget where it was. Huh? Trying to sit on that. Sit on it. <laughs> 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 is, is there, is there a, a, there must be a tale to this. <laughs> um, I've, I've been down in Eastbourne, you know, and, and they, take, they still take English money down there, which is very strange. Um, but when you go into a coffee shop, what oh, the hell? Yeah. yeah. Oh, anyway, so I just walked this together the other day, and called a cup of coffee. I sat in the cafe watching people pass by, some walking brisk, briskly, some walking slow. Thinking I'm lucky to afford a cup of coffee at three quid a go. The young, <coughs> the young on the mobiles, iPods in their ears and we had trannies and boss walkmans to show. Did they really buy that cup of coffee for three quid a go? <coughs> I lift up my latte, a large one she said, put it down again and sip it real slow. How can this small cup of coffee cost three quid a go? <clears throat> it's nearly all water and some frothy milk. Perhaps it's really special. I don't know. But it really needs to be at three quid a go. All the folks seem happy to pay it, so I smile, trying hard not to show. I can't believe coffee costs three quid a go. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> 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 
did, I did one <coughs> at the Honest Lawyer a bit ago, I think I've lost it again there. And it was, um, it was about my problems as I had an operation. And it's called A Real Problem. And for those of you that haven't got it, prepare yourself. <laughs> Seem to have a lot of problems I didn't have when I was younger. And these problems are a pest and now seem to last a lot longer. They manifest themselves in the strangest of ways, keep me awake at night and embarrass me by the day. I've got terminal flatulence. I've lost my sense of smell. I know it isn't pleasant, and when I'm in company, I can tell. I had an operation where it didn't do any good. Doctor suggested that I change my type of food. He gave me a new diet of veg, fruit and prunes, it didn't stop the flatulence, it just made me fart in tune. <laughs> I've, got, I've got terminal flatulence and I've lost my sense of smell and I know it isn't pleasant and when I'm in company they can tell. I tried homeopathy, more diets and hypnosis, but no one could help. I've got flatulence psychosis. <laughs> I know I'm, in, I'm now in a home where people... I'm sorry, I'm now in a home where people where like people are meeting, they keep us in a room and use our methane for the heating. <laughs> I've got terminal flatulence and I've lost my sense of smell and I know it isn't pleasant, but when I'm in company I can tell. At least I'm being useful, <clears throat> but I'm feeling quite unwell. Because you see, I've regained my sense of smell. <laughs> While I'm, I'm with others and there is no cure for us, I become quite musical and now we all fart the Hallelujah chorus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.